This is a demonstration of zipper tubing's PRTES material. Uh, very much PRTES is an adhesive lined version of the standard PRT tubing. Um, here's a piece of PRTES. This looks identical to standard PRT and essentially it is except that it has a hot melt adhesive applied to the inside which is going to melt and fill any voids when the tubing shrinks and create an environmentally tight uh, secondary jacket. The uh, important instructions for installing PRTES can be found at zippertubing.com and there is an extensive document that will walk you through the material sizes, there are digital photos, that take you step by step through the process. Um, the video demonstration is going to complement this, uh, but by no means should be limited to the video demonstration. You definitely want to get a copy of this, uh, familiarize yourself with it. Uh, the, we have a cable here, it's a shielded cable. And I don't know if it's possible to see or not, but there is a has been a damage to the outer jacket insulation. Now it's quite easy to fix a cable like this uh, with PRTES. And what we're going to do is simply uh, take a, a razor blade and trim off the excessive uh, uh, material that's standing up there, and apply the PRTES uh, material over it as a patch. And even if the, uh, uh, since the jacket is damaged and the braid is now exposed to the environment, once the PRTES uh, jacket is installed, it will create an environmentally tight uh, protective joint over the braid. Uh, let me get a uh, start to do this. Essentially, like with all PRT, you want to go back and size the material. Um, the standard sizes are four different sizes. They're primarily intended for small, small wires and cables up through quarter inch. Um, it is possible to do larger sizes and further into this document describes how you use standard PRT and uh, can do sizes up through inch and three quarters uh, by using the hot melt adhesive as a tape wrap in a separate step from uh, uh, prior to the PRT being installed. But on small sizes like this, this cable is a quarter inch diameter, which there is a quarter inch size from 175 to 250. It turns out to be the PRT um, ES number four size, of which I have a sample here. So the first thing you're going to do is come in and carefully cut off the barb so that you don't have a, a big uh, protrusion there and just get the cable back to a fairly a smooth condition. You don't want to uh, do any additional damage to it. Uh, then you simply uh, get a, procure the correct size of material. In this case I'm gonna well I'll cut this off so that let's see I don't need this long a length and you simply cut it to the length you need with a pair of scissors and if we do this right, we can even get the identification size uh, on there. Now normally your tubing doesn't have the identification size. It's strictly for the purpose of this demonstration. Um, in the same fashion as with standard PRT, you lay the cable or wrap the tubing repair around the defect. The defect is, is, is right here in the middle. Um, you're going to wrap it around so that the heat transfer adhesive uh, paper release liners on top. You're going to pull back some of the adhesive uh, to expose the adhesive and align the non adhesive edge and stick it in place and slowly pull the release liner back and continue to seal the tubing back into a tube and you want to rub it real good so that it's uh, stuck down well and now it's obviously loose it can be moved around anywhere um, and we're ready to shrink it in place 
as with standard PRT, PRTES is no different in the sense that you need to use a uh, narrow nozzle to concentrate the heat. We're going to localize the heat to the um, overlap area first. We want that area to shrink down completely uh, before we apply, apply heat to the remainder of the, uh, of the part. And it would be nice to get it localized over in the right spot. Okay. And what you can do is, um, like standard PRT, uh, you need a heat gun that will put out 150 or 60 degrees C. Um, usually it takes no more than around 120 to 30 C to shrink it well. The material will begin to shrink at uh, 90 degrees C, but works quite nicely at the uh, 120 to 130 range. So I'm going to orientate the uh, overlap section uh, at, over the defect. Uh, the adhesive will eventually melt and ooze around the entire part. There's no reason to be in a hurry here. Um, PRTES will save you so much time relative to using a standard piece of tubing where you would have to disassemble the connectors or uh, disassemble the cable extensively to access the problem. Uh, I'm going to start applying heat to the overlap and there's it's more than acceptable to apply a little heat and then remove the heat. The tubing will tend to curl up at the overlap area. You just continue to apply heat at the overlap area and it will lay back down flat. And let's see here. Now because these are relatively small, it will turn out that the rest of the tubing will have started to shrink. Um, if the tubing tends to lift off, in this case it didn't, but the, just so you don't touch it briefly, you know, burn yourself, it's, it's quite acceptable to come back and tap down the overlap to make sure it's nice and flat. Uh, in this case, I'm going to continue to concentrate the heat at the overlap flap. And it looks like it's doing quite nicely. I'll come back and do the rest of it. And it's starting to lift off a little bit there, so I will touch it back down. And you can see you can see the hot melt adhesive starting to ooze out. If you continue to apply too much heat too quickly, the adhesive will expand so much inside it may tend to want to rupture the uh, the overlap seam. So, you know, like I say, apply a little heat, take it off, apply a little heat, and this will be indic this will depend be somewhat dependent on how much heat you're using. Uh, if you use a lot of heat, uh, this is gonna you're gonna only expose it briefly and then pull it off. And we have a little bit of overlap stuff there too. Uh, I think it's possible to uh, to see the hot melt adhesive is oozed out on this end. It's also oozed out on this end. And what you want to do is make sure that it's oozed out uniformly all the way around. Um, doesn't necessarily have to be pretty. You may have your own internal requirements for what it looks like. Uh, it's been my experience. You can do more damage to the part um, trying to make it look pretty. Uh, the important thing is simply to have a good 300 uh, adhesive oozing out uh, 360 degrees around the cable. And this one looks like it's uh, done nicely. Um, once this cools down, there is some adhe uh, transfer adhesive exposed here. Um, with, with PRTES, because there is a hot melt adhesive involved, you want to let this cool down a little more than you would with standard PRT before you try and rub this adhesive off because you don't want to get your finger into the hot adhesive. You might burn yourself uh, or you might move the part on the adhesive. So I, in this case I like to, uh, these are generally installed in small short sections and uh, might as well make this so it's readable. Uh, because you are dealing with a, a fairly short section, uh, there's no need to, uh, you want to be sure that you don't move it while it's still hot. And this is starting to cool down okay. 
and I can start rubbing the excess adhesive off and it still comes off fairly easy. And you can discard the uh, little bit of adhesive residue. Now the hot melt adhesive will re-solidify and, and will not be sticky. Um, rubbing the overlap seam area here is simply to remove as much excess uh, sticky adhesive as possible. Yeah, the overlap or the uh, bleed outs are, are starting to solidify nice. They're uh, fairly cool to the touch. And uh, when you're done, you've got a nice environmental patch because that adhesive through the entire part melted and flowed and filled the defect in the cable insulation and any environment on the outside trying to get to that defect uh, can't because it's solid, solid adhesive.